Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 19 in this series entitled jQuery in ASP.NET 4.5. jQuery is a JavaScript library developed to ease up client side scripting, event handling, animation, and AJAX. The idea of jQuery is looking for a group of elements and doing something to them. Looking for groups is done through selectors, and the doing part are action verbs. In the example, the P is the selector, and the click is the action. This means that when a P text has been clicked, a message back that says, Welcome to KFU will appear. The $document.ready function means that this event is fired as soon as the document is loaded. It can be written as simple as dollar function. To download jQuery, we have to go to jQuery.com slash download. Let's go to the site jQuery.com slash download. jQuery is available in two formats, the compressed and the uncompressed. The uncompressed has bigger file size but the code can be understood, while the compressed has smaller size but the contents are not understandable. So I suggest that you right click the uncompressed product, save link as, and save. When finished downloading, try to locate your file. Usually, it's in the Downloads folder, like this one. So this is now ready for calling in our later programs. For our first activity, we will create an ASP.NET website and place it in CASP Activity 19. We'll create a web form, my first jQuery, with P and div texts. We will create click function for each tag that will alert whether a P or a div tag was clicked. Let's create our Activity 19 website. Activity 19. Let's create a folder. Add new folder. Let's call it scripts. And inside it, we will insert an existing item. Uh, that is our JavaScript jQuery. As of this recording, the latest is 1.9.1. Okay, so now let's create our web form and the name is my first jQuery okay so the first thing we have to do is to drag jQuery into the head tag okay then we will create another script tag okay and in the script tag, we will have type of text and JavaScript. Okay. You know, we can enter our jQuery code. So we'll start with the document that read. So this means that when the document is ready, we will create this function. Open, then close to close it and later again close it in semicolon let's enter a function inside now so the idea is that whenever there is a p tag and it was clicked we have to create a function and what is that function that function is simply al to alert to display a message that we click the p tag so let's say you clicked a p tag semicolon let's close it close it semicolon is it correct okay we forgot to end our string okay that's it this is for the p tag. How about for the div tag? It's almost the same, so let's simply just copy it. Copy it, control C, control B. So this time, if it's a div tag, we will alert you clicked a div tag. So what is this code all about? If whenever we see a p tag and it was clicked, we will alert it. Whenever we see a div tag and it was clicked, then we will have this alert. 
That's it. So now let's have some examples of this uh, div and p. Let's start with the p tag. Let's just say uh, this is a p text. And then the other one is that uh, this is a div text. Okay, let's just style it. Okay. We're done. Let's look at the output. If I click this P text or this P tag, you click the P tag, there's an alert message. And if I click this div text, you click a div tag. Okay, well done. In this activity, we will be creating some simple applications of app animation using hide and fade out. So we will create a web form called my second jQuery with two p and two div texts. We will add a function that will hide after two seconds a p text that was clicked. We will also add a function that will fade out after three seconds a div text that was clicked. We will also add a button with a click function that will show all p and div texts. So let's create our second web form. Right click, add web form. My second jQuery. Again, let's add the script in the title tag and below it we'll create the script. The type is equal to text JavaScript and we can close it already. So inside it we will write the function. The document that ready can be simplified with dollar function. That's it. So we'll close it, close it, close it, semicolon. And then inside it, we will write our code. So we are asked uh, that whenever we click a p tag, so that is p, and click, we will write some function. And what is that function? That function is to hide it. So dollar, we can use the name this to refer to our P. And then we will hide it. Now, this is the animation for three seconds. This is 3,000 milliseconds. So that's an equivalent of three seconds also. Now, we can close it. Okay, that's it. The other one is for the div. So I'll just copy it same way. So this time, it's a div that was clicked. And what are we going to do with it? We're going to simply apply fade out. So that is fade out there. Fade out. 3,000 milliseconds. And the last one is for a button. For a click to a button. So we will refer it to button one. We have not yet inserted it, but for sure the name will be button one. So we'll add a click function. Okay. There is the function. And we have to do two things for this click function. And that is to simply show both P and div. So we're going to look for P's, all P's, right? and we will show them. So this will happen to all the P's. So the same thing, we will look for all the divs, and the same, we will show them. That's it. So now we have to put some app examples of P and deep texts. Let's start with a P text. This is P. Now let's add a div. Div. Okay. This, oh sorry, this should be this is a div. Let's just copy this too. 
and create another set. This is P again, and this is div again. And then at the end of all this, we have to provide a button. So let's go back to standard, and then we will place a button. Okay, so that's it. So remember here, we have created this uh, button data type or button ASP control, and the ID is button one there. That's this button one. Let's try to run it. Control F5. So let's try to click this first P. Click it. There. It's hiding after three seconds. Let's try to click this div. Click. Okay, it's fading out. Let's try to click this P again. There, it's hiding after three seconds, and this div is fading out after three seconds. That's simple animation in ASP dot using jQuery. Now, if I click this button, it will again show all the P's and div tags. Okay, very good. Well done. For our last activity, we will create a new web form called my third jQuery with two HTML input buttons. Take note that these are HTML input buttons with texts, expand, and shrink, and a panel. We will create an embedded CSS for the, uh, the background color, light green, color is red, width, and so on. Now, when button for expanding is clicked, we will animate the panel with, with, with width of 500 pixels and font size of 25 pixels. When button for shrinking is clicked, we will animate the panel with width of 100 pixels and font size of 14 pixels. We will make each animation last for 3 seconds. Okay, for our last example, we'll create another a web form. We'll call it my third jQuery. Then we will create a folder for the style sheet. We'll call it styles. And inside it, we will add a style sheet. So for that style sheet, we have only this, this div. Now, remember that for the div tag, uh, it also affects the, the panel component. So whatever we do here will affect the panel. So we'll start with the background color. We'll make it light green. There, light green. And then the color, we'll make it red. Okay. Then the width is 100 pixels. The border is going to be 2 pixels. Size should be solid. And the color is black. The padding, will have it for 10 pixels. And the last is the font size. We'll make it smaller, like 14 pixels. Okay, so that's it for the style sheet. Now let's go to my third jQuery and drag our style sheet. Also, don't forget to drag our jQuery script. And then here, we can type another script. The type is equal to text JavaScript. Let's close it. Okay, so we are now ready to create our method or our function. So let's start with dollar. Let's try to go back to the document that ready. Remember that this can be shortened by using only function. If you want, you can make it as lengthy as this one. Function, close it close it, close it, and close the function, semicolon. Let's try to enter it. Okay, so here, uh, let's start with the button one. What will happen when the first button is clicked? Remember that we have two buttons. So let's start with the first button. We'll call it button one. When it is click, uh, this is the um, expand button. So function, close, close, semicolon, close it, close it, and a semicolon. So what are we going to do with the button? For the button, we will do something for the 
panel so dollar sharp panel panel one uh, this components I, ha I have not been added yet but we know that if we do uh, these are the default names so we'll simply animate it we'll animate it by having a width and font size change so we'll close it and close it and semicolon is it correct panel one oh i forgot the double quote here okay let's animate one so what are we going to do inside here we will change the width to 500 pixels remember that they are placed in a quotation and then it's a comma the font size the font size is 25 pixels and again they are in quotation no, no need for a comma uh, it said uh, something about three seconds so that delay should be here again this is three thousand milliseconds so that's an equivalent of three seconds so this is the first one let's create another for button two i'll just simply copy it and this time it's for button two and it will also affect the fan panel but this time uh, the width will be changed to 100 pixels and the size will be returned to 14 pixels okay so i think we're done with our code the next is we're going to put our controls remember that this is not a button from the standard but an input button from html so let's drag it okay there's the input but button the first one and we need another one second so this one will change it to expand and the other one will change it to shrink then we need a panel so the panel is from the standard control there panel okay we'll just put some message here uh, this panel expands or shrinks okay so let's try to run it in our browser uh, so this is our panel and the uh, initial design is from our style sheet if we click expand you'll see the animation the width changed to 500 pixels and uh, the font size became 25 pixels if you click the shrink button you can see the animation as it shrinks to 100 pixel width and the size of 14 pixels well done guys so congratulations we just finished discussing jquery in asp.net thank you for taking the time to watch this video Masalama.